Good morning. Uh, my name is David Rule, and I'm Chief Executive of the International Securities Lending Association. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the impact that the various securities lending regulations that have been introduced around the world uh, have had on the securities finance markets uh, generally. So let's first of all look at a table uh, showing uh, the restrictions that have been introduced. Actually, this table is. Uh, uh, not quite up to date. It's a fast moving uh, world um, and regulators are making changes all the time. Um, as you can see, uh, regulations have been introduced in uh, a wide variety of countries. Uh, they've actually already uh, run off in the US, but new regulations are being introduced uh, in other countries all the time. For example, the rules were extended in Italy to all stocks quite recently, and we had new rules, for example, in Norway uh, a week or so ago. Now these rules have been introduced hurriedly, uh, unfortunately for the market they do vary from country to country and there are uh, a number of ambiguities uh, in, uh, about how the rules work uh, in several countries. Now we recognise why the regulators have acted, obviously uh, we've had a lot of market volatility and a lot of politicians, press and others um, have attributed that at least in part to uh, short selling. Uh, ISLA believes that that is, uh, that is wrong, um, that short selling has not been behind uh, the volatility that we've seen and that that, that in fact reflects uh, the great uncertainty about the underlying fundamentals of these companies, particularly obviously at the moment financial companies. But in any case, the regulators have acted um, and the market has had to cope with those regulations. Uh, as I said, what fundamental problem for banks is just simply understanding what the regulations are in the different countries and as I said they've been that they've been introduced without consultation and they have been updated and amended um, for the securities lending uh, industry particular problems have arisen in markets where not only have regulators um, acted to uh, put controls on short selling but they've also put controls around securities lending uh, a point that we make all the time in ISLA is that the two are not synonymous uh, securities are loaned for many purposes other than to facilitate short selling, for example, fails coverage in settlement, and to facilitate market making. And without an active securities lending market, market liquidity in the cash equities and derivatives market um, deteriorates rapidly. Uh, so where are the markets where we've seen problems? Uh, France and Belgium have, been problem, ha have seen problems. Uh, the regulators there have uh, encouraged securities lenders to cease lending securities except for what the regulators regard as acceptable purposes including to facilitate market making and settlement. Uh, that has meant uh, ha ha lenders have to be comfortable that a borrower is borrowing for those purposes. Uh, ISLA has tried to develop a form of words that borrowers can provide lenders uh, to give them that comfort uh, but putting that, place, putting that in place um, ha has created issues in the market. Uh, there's been even greater problems recently in Italy and Spain. Uh, let me just show you a couple of charts. This, this is uh, the value of Italian equities available uh, to borrow, so available, uh, lendable uh, in the market. And as you can see, there has been a very sharp reduction, uh, pretty much halving of the availability of Italian equities uh, to borrow in the market uh, over, over the past month or so. And that's followed uh, people trying to interpret what the Italian regulators, uh, regulations mean for lending. Uh, and broadly the view is now that um, if, you, if, 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 if an institution sells um, shares that it has on loan, it must recall those shares um, before the instruction to sell them. Uh, in practice that's very difficult to work um, because typically the lending program is run by a custodian. Um, the, the asset manager uh, will not routinely advise the custodian in advance if it intends to sell the shares. There's no procedures in place to make that happen. Um, and uh, acting in a risk-averse way, lenders in, in many cases have simply pulled lending of Italian equities. And we've seen a similar phenomenon in Spain uh, where again uh, almost there's a kind of side effect of the regulations on naked short selling that have been put in place in Spain. The regulators have again said that um, before an asset manager can sell uh, Spanish equ equities, um, 
the custodian, the lender, uh, must first recall any of those that are on loan. And again, in practical terms, that's been very difficult for the market to implement. And risk-averse lenders have pulled lending of Spanish equities. And we're actually beginning to see a real market impact in the cash equity and derivative markets, which I suspect is unintended from the point of view of those regulators. So the market has faced real headaches complying with these regulations and they've also had what I would think of as unintended market consequences um, affecting market liquidity in key markets like Italy and Spain. But have the regulations actually achieved their objectives? Well, the regulators weren't particularly uh, clear about what their objectives were, but you would think that it would be to reduce volatility uh, in financial shares, typically the ones that have been subject to these rules, and particularly downward volatility. But in fact, if we look at what's actually happened, uh, it isn't clear that those rules have had those effects at all. In fact, uh, looking at this chart, this, ch this chart shows for UK bank shares um, the uh, excess returns on UK bank shares on a daily basis. So if you like, it's the, it's the change in value of the share less the change in value of the market, the FTSE 100 index. Um, and the chart shows a number of things. It shows the average daily return, the dark blue line. It shows the cumulative return on, on, on all of the shares, the light blue line. And it shows the, uh, the worst uh, excess return and the best excess return across those banks on a daily basis. Um, and the big thing I would take from this chart is that uh, up until, up in the period up until uh, the ban on uh, taking net short positions was introduced, um, on the 19th of September. We had some volatility uh, in the daily returns on these shares, um, but since the ban was introduced, that volatility has increased dramatically. Um, now, I don't particularly attribute that to the short selling ban. I think it, it reflects um, the significant news we've had uh, with, with, with uh, for example, government support for, for the banking sector since the ban was introduced. But certainly, if the FSA was hoping um, that banning short selling would reduce volatility, that, then that hope has not been fulfilled. And in fact, what I would take away from this is that actually fundamental news drives volatility in share prices rather than short selling. Um, it's, it's not the wishes of people who are long or short that move share prices up and down. It's, it's the underlying fundamentals um, of, of the prospects of those companies. Um, and I think broadly a regulator looking at this chart should take the message that these short selling bans um, have not achieved their objective and should be lifted as soon as possible. There have of course been other um, unintended costs of the short selling ban. Uh, if, if you take short sellers out of the market, um, you, you take liquidity out of the market. You, you, you take people who will sell when they believe the price is overvalued and you take people who will close out short positions um, when they believe the price is undervalued. You take, take traders out of the market. And some interesting research done by Credit Suisse in the US market shows that in fact trading costs for investors have increased or increased in the financial stocks during the period of the short selling ban there. This chart shows that uh, bid offer spreads, a measure of trading costs, actually rose um, reasonably significantly from the beginning of September towards the end of September when the short selling ban was in, in force um, and I think that's a reflection of the fact that liquidity was taken out of the market. Um, so not only did these bans not achieve their objective of reducing volatility but from an investor point of view um, they actually uh, increased trading costs um, and that's generally a message I would give to beneficial owners who think, uh, I would think misguidedly that if they stop lending shares, they stop facilitating short selling, it will actually benefit them. I would say that actually it will probably have very little effect on the underlying share prices, but one thing will certainly do, um, if, if it happens in any significant level across the market as a whole, is raise trading costs for you by uh, decreasing liquidity in the market. Okay, thank you very much.